Hey math enthusiast, I'm here to go over the 10.6 notes about segment lengths in circles. The vocab they start us off with is just essentially new parts in circles. Obviously we know chords have endpoints on the circle like A, B, and C, D here. All right, but the new ones that we come across are a secant segment, all right, which is not a line. It's only part of the secant. So like E, B technically is a secant and intersects my circle at two points A and B. All right, so the secant segment has endpoints at E and B and E and D. All right, then the external secant is the part of that secant segment that is obviously outside the circle. So EA would be considered an external secant. All right, or an external segment, sorry. So the first theorem we come across does deal with chords inside of a circle. All right, let's take a closer look at this picture and see exactly what they're talking about in this theorem. Essentially what they're saying is that when these two chords intersect, they break up into smaller pieces, these two smaller segments. So we got DE, EC, and then obviously AE and EB that I already, already highlighted. And what this theorem tells me is that the product of those two pieces, so the length of AE times the length of EB, is going to be equal to the product of my two other pieces, DE times EC. Let's see if we can apply this theorem to the examples below. So my chords intersect here. They're broken up into smaller pieces. We have 6 and 4. And then for my other chords, they're broken up into 3 and x. And obviously, I'm looking to solve for x. So according to my theorem, I'm going to multiply the two pieces together. 6 times 4 and 3 times x. So I end up with 24 equals 3x. So obviously, x is going to equal 8. Now, this next example does seem a little bit harder from the start but just use the same concept that we used on the previous one. So my chords are broken up into these two different pieces, and what I'm gonna do is just multiply those pieces together. So first I'll do the red. We got x times 2x minus one, and this is equal to the product of the blue ones. Now remember to use parentheses around your expressions. Now on the left-hand side, all I have to do is just distribute my x to both terms. So I'm going to end up with 2x squared minus x. On the right-hand side, remember that you're going to have to FOIL these terms. So I have 2x squared minus 4x plus 4x minus 8. Now, as I work through this equation, I notice I have 2x squared on each side, so those cancel out negative 4x, positive 4x, those cancel out. So I'm essentially just left with negative x equals negative 8. So obviously x equals 8. Now the next theorem we come across actually does deal with those secant segments and the external secants or the external segments. So I've tried to highlight everything in my picture over here on the right. And this is essentially the breakdown for what this theorem tells me. All right, so the outside piece, EA, times the whole thing in blue, EB, is equal to the external segment for the other se secant segment times the whole secant segment, ED. So you can essentially you can just kind of think of it as the piece times the whole and the piece times the whole. So let's see if we can apply this theorem to the examples below. So once again, I'm trying to solve for x in this example. And as I said, according to my theorem, it's going to be the external piece, which is 20, times the whole secant segment, all right, which is going to be the sum of those two pieces, x plus 20. I'm going to do the same thing for the other secant segment. So the external piece, which is 15, times the whole secant segment, which is the sum of those two pieces, 3x plus 15. Now all I have to do is go through and solve. 
First thing I'm going to do is distribute that 20. So we end up with 20x plus 400. Then over here, it looks like we got 45x plus 225. So after I move some turns around, it looks like we end up with, sorry about that, 25x equals 175. Divide that by 25, x equals 7. Now, for the next one, at first glance, it does seem a little bit easier. So, uh, let's set it up. We got the external piece 4 times the whole thing, which is just 6 plus 4, which gives me 10. And I'm going to set it equal to the external piece, which in this case is x, times the whole thing which is going to be 7 plus x, right, plus x. So now when I go through and multiply, it looks like we end up with 40 equals, so remember to distribute to both terms, so we got 7x plus x squared. So at this point, what I notice is I have an x squared term, an x to the first term, and a constant. All right, so first thing I want to do is try to get this into standard form. So I'm going to move this 40 over to the other side, get it set equal to 0. So I'm going to have x squared plus 7x minus 40, and then it's going to be equal to 0. I'm just going to put that over on the right. So I need to try to factor this if possible. Well, my factors for negative 40 would really only be negative 4 and 10. I can do negative 8 and 5. All right, but I need them to add to positive 7. Now, eventually, what you're going to find after some trial is that you can't factor this. Now, if you can't factor it, I still need to solve it. And what we're going to have to use is the quadratic equation. So I placed the equation over here on the left to help us out, but what I'm gonna to need to identify is my a, b, and c. So remember there is a one in front of this x, that's my a, my b is going to be positive seven, and my c is going to be negative 40. Remember, it's that whole thing. So now I just need to go through and plug them into my equation. So first we have the opposite of b, which is gonna be negative seven, plus or minus, got this big square root, I'm going to have b squared, well that's just 7 squared, uh, what do we got, minus 4ac, a is 1, and c is negative 40, and this is all over 2a, and a is 1. Next thing I want to do is clean all this up, so I'm still going to have negative 7 on the outside, plus or minus, but under the square root, now I'm going to have 49. Both of these are negative. So I know right away that's going to give me a positive. So we end up with positive 160 over 2. Still have to clean up what's under my radical. Still have negative 7 on the outside. Plus or minus square root 209 over 2. The last thing I want to try to do is see if I can clean this up at all, that radical 209. Now, after some trial and error, I'll find that there aren't too many factors for 209 and that I cannot simplify this radical here. So x is just going to be equal to negative 7 plus or minus radical 209 divided by 2. But I'm just going to keep it in this form. Now the last theorem in this section deals both with secants and tangents. So similar to the last section, I still have an external secant here, ED, or a secant segment with an external segment. And then I have this small little tangent segment, essentially. It just touches my circle right at point A, that point of tangency. And obviously my tangent and my secant intersect at point E. So according to my theorem, I'm going to square that tangent, ea squared, 
and it's going to be equal to the product of, once again, the piece, the external piece, times the whole thing, ED, that whole secant segment. So let's see if we can apply this theorem. So for this first example, obviously I'm solving for x. First thing I want to identify is my tangent. So here's my tangent x. So I know according to my theorem, it's going to be my tangent squared. So x squared is going to be equal to the external segment, equal to the external segment times the whole secant segment, which is going to be 24 plus 3. All right, which is obviously going to give me 27. So now all I have to do is multiply these two together. So I'm going to end up with x squared equals 81. Then obviously the square root of that is going to leave me with x equals positive or negative 9. Now in this case, I'm dealing with length. So obviously I'm only going to stick with the positive. So my final answer is really just going to be x equals 9. So for the next example, first thing you want to identify is your tangent. All right, so my equation is going to be my tangent squared. So 3 squared is going to be equal to the external piece, which is x, times the whole secant segment, which is going to be x plus 8. So on the left-hand side, I'm obviously going to end up with 9. I end up with x squared plus 8x. So I have a constant. I have x to the second. I have x to the first. I'm going to have to try to factor. So first thing I'm going to do is get it into standard form. I'm going to move that 9 to the other side. So we have negative 9 equal to 0. So now I'm looking for factors of negative 9 that are going to add to positive 8. So I should be able to factor this one. I'm going to set it up with x and x in the first terms in my expressions. And I know my factors of 9 are 3 and 3 and 9 and 1. I'm going to go with 9 and 1. It has to be positive 8, so it's going to be positive 9 and negative 1. So my final answer is going to be negative 9 and positive 1. But as I said in the previous problem, I can't have a negative length. So I know my final answer is just 1.